Yemen's Houthi rebels have released footage of their military wing hijacking a cargo ship in the Red Sea. Joining us live now, former U.S. Army Major Mike Lyons. Uh, Mike, it's good to see you again this morning. Thanks for your time. So I found this vision compelling, all of it. Uh, you just don't see this every day. How brazen was this? No, it is an incred incredible visual. It's a you know kind of call of duty from a from a game perspective. Uh, the fact that they had GoPros, well planned, well organized helicopter there. Uh, they knew exactly what they were doing as it as it lands. Um, I you know the the credit for them for the training of this. Uh, clearly, there's Iranian fingerprints all over this because mm. the kind of training it took in order to do this uh, came from another source. You, I wouldn't think that the Houthis have this kind of capability. But, uh, but you know, they, they decide now to, you know, kind of put a stake in the ground on these kinds of cargo ships in the Red Sea in particular, which is a strategic location for Israel. And, uh, you know, no, no deterrence is working. That's the problem right now in that part of the world. Nothing stops these countries like the Houthis from getting involved with Israel without thinking there's going to be any consequences to this. So uh, they got away with one here, another one from from some perspective. But um, but again, we have to see what happens going forward. Well, where does this lead, Mike? What, what next? Well, I think we can first try to get the ship back. But again, it's in the Red Sea and it's a strategic location. If you come to the south there, that strait that exists between uh, Djibouti and, and Yemen is, is strategic with regard to oil going through it. Uh, can't have that locked up, can't have uh, a country like uh, the Yemen, the Yemen and, and the Houthis controlling that. U.S. Uh, warships are going to continue to pass through there. Uh, let's hope we can get this ship back from Israel's sake. Israel says it's got no connection to them. There, it might be owned at some point by mm. some Israeli citizen, but, uh, but operated by the Japanese, owned by the British. Uh, they might have picked the wrong ship, but but they've got a good propaganda for it, that's for sure. Yeah, no, no, they sure do. I mean, it's a slick production here, and... Um... You, you mentioned this as well. You've, it's got Iranian fingerprints on it. Um, and uh, is, is there anybody else it could have been? No, I think this is where it comes from. And it, it gives uh, Israel things to con be concerned about, knowing that they have an enemy there to their south. We've already seen them fire launched cruise missiles, long-range missiles yeah. from there uh, into there. The, the, their, their, their highest level air defense platforms had to take those ones out. And and so the, the, there's there's concern here, Israel, as they fight this war on all fronts, both in Gaza, they have uh, issues in the West Bank, and then, of course, in the north uh, with Hezbollah. And, and they're fighting for their survival right now. And not, again, no one's deterred, especially the Iranians. And if they continue to attack American forces, for example, yeah. in Syria and Iraq, then, then perhaps maybe the United States will decide to, re to respond in a manner that uh, that keeps them from doing that going forward. But so, so far, yeah, we haven't done that. The, OK, so what should what should come next from the US point of view? Because like you said there, you know, American military targets have been hit. You've got this example here, which points to a broadening of the war in the Middle East. So what does the US have to do now? No, it does. And this is not a military target. And there's lots of military targets for the United States to go after if they decided to do that. Uh, drone factories, uh, the logistical supply points, troop formations that are existing there. There's lots of military targets for us to choose from. I think there's frustration in the Pentagon right now as this administration tries to hold back and, and be very cautious when it comes to trying to engage with the Iranians. But but frankly, none of it, this is going to be solved until the Iranians decide that uh, they're no longer going to be this this funder of terrorism and this mm. organizer for a proxy war. They've got the proxy war they want. They have all these 13 or 14 different militia groups fighting what they want to be against Israel at this point, uh, and they don't seem to be deterred. Yeah, pulling all the strings. Mike Lyons, good to chat as always. We'll talk to you soon.